right, it's early Tuesday morning and the tree's coming down. We'll show you some progress as it goes, but they're here and it's time to go. Ricky, this whole time, five people in red hoodies have been standing in our yard and you've had no idea. The second they fire up the truck, the truck, there's a disturbance in the force. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? He's huffing and puffing. Look at him. He's got his head hanging over the couch looking at the door. <laughs> hey, Rick. You on guard? Huh? April thinks his tail is sore from the weekend. Yeah, it's like broken. Not literally. <laughs> but like, wagging too much? Yeah. He, is that a thing? He only puts it up when he poops. It has been... <laughs> Hanging low all day yesterday. Does your tail hang low? Does it wag too much and hurt? Like literally if you look back on our videos of us walking him, it's like la 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 la, but yesterday it was like <laughs> Limp tail. Yeah. It's weird. Happens to the best of them. I literally think he was just too excited and happy. Get him. Okay. Another day and this dead tree is still standing. So we had another turn of events in the saga of getting this giant dead tree down in the backyard that is preventing us from doing it today. Maybe it'll be next week or maybe it'll be in a few months, but it's not coming down today. So the guy's been here once or twice and kind of has always alluded to the fact that we are able to get up into the yard to get the tree with his big lift truck from my downhill neighbor's side. Come up through the front yard, go between the houses on mats, go park and it'll be fine. I, he told me this like three or four times. Our uphill side of the house is a lot flatter. Not that the downhill side is very steep at all, but the uphill side's flatter, but there's a tree in the way from my neighbors. And I had mentioned, I was like, do you think you can get up through this way before I knew the size of the truck? And he said, uh, no, I don't think, let's just do the downhill side. So I was like all set to do, do the downhill side. My neighbor was on board, we were good to go. He came out today, took a look with, we've had dry days for like three days in a row, um, but the ground is still soft. Around here, the ground is definitely always still soft until like at least middle of June, if you're lucky, if June isn't a washout. Um, so he's like, well, I don't, I think the truck's going to slide. It's probably not the best option to do the downhill side. He's like, let's look at the uphill side. I was like, okay, but what about the tree? Uh, so they were like going to lay the mats. They did lay some of the mats and he's like, we can get it up here. We just need to cut three feet off of three feet minimum off your neighbor's tree. And I was like, well, three feet's quite a bit for me to just say, let's do it. Uh, so it's like quarter to eight in the morning at this point five guys in red hoodies are standing in my front yard and I didn't really want to bombard my neighbor and like be like hey is this like cool are you good with us cutting half your tree off on one side so uh unfortunately they're still gonna do it hopefully I mean he still wants to work and I want to give him the work and we're all in agreement of doing it and having it ready to go but today is not the day we're gonna wait for maybe the middle of June, maybe July, until it gets really dry. We're able to do the downhill neighbor side on a dry day. So that's what we're gonna do. In the meantime, I'm gonna talk to my neighbor up above me. I know him, he's also a good guy. I don't know if he's in as much interest to have the tree taken down since it's not really near his yard. Um, but I'm gonna talk to him and see what he thinks, if he's fine with trimming that side of the tree. I'm gonna call the guys back and see when they can get here, end of the week, next week, you know, something like that sooner than the middle of summer but worst case scenario that tree is hanging on till the middle of summer and a few dry days to get the ground really hard so the tree still sits it's been an ongoing saga i had five people out here to talk about the tree the guy i'm going with has been out here three separate times including today that sucker's still standing my best friend is the best she's dropping off a margarita right now Oh yeah, full of margarita. <laughs> Thanks bud, you're the best. Yay. Ricky, we got margaritas today, yay. Yeah. Is the barber shop open again? Yep, she opened. Does the barber know what she's doing? No. 
what is this, twice in quarantine? It's the second time, yeah. I have cut your hair once before, I forget why. Do you remember? I don't know. It was, would have been a while ago. I was in your parents' bathroom, or like downstairs. I, don't I think know you had why. to fix something that someone else screwed, screwed up. Uh, oh yeah, I was like, I need to finish. Yeah. Very interesting. This guy's got thick hair, man. Yep. Not as thick as him. Well, have fun with that. I just finished uh, cutting Chris's hair, and I will say it turned out pretty okay. Um, I'm not a hairdresser at all. You can pretty much tell that, but um, after he put some gel in it, I think it was pretty normal. Uh, he could probably go to work with it. I wouldn't take, like, company photos with it, maybe, but uh, all in all, I'm pretty, pretty proud of how that turned out. Um, so anyway, since it is Cinco de Mayo, and uh, I rarely celebrate it because I'm either at work or um, in college I was always super busy, um, it took a global pandemic for me to actually celebrate. And of course, it's Tuesday in Cinco de Mayo for the first time that I can remember falls on Taco Tuesday. So Taco Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo, all in one. It's like amazing fiesta. So I am making uh, tacos for tonight. And uh, as you saw earlier, my BFF gave me a margarita that she made because uh, we are out of tequila. Not that I had it before. But anyway, um, very excited for that. And uh, yeah, I'll show you my tacos when I get them ready. Brrrah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Ay, ay, ay! Taco Yay! Tuesday! Cinco de Mayo! Olé! I feel like there was a meme in 2019 that was something like, all these crazy dates in 2020, 2020 is gonna be lit! And one uh -huh. of them was Cinco de Mayo and Taco Tuesday. And even though 2020 is not, as the kids say, lit, we still have Taco Tuesday and Cinco de Mayo on the same day! Woo! And to celebrate Taco Tuesday and Cinco de Mayo, we're having tacos, homemade tacos. And my mom dropped off enchiladas. And Caitlin made margaritas. And mac and cheese. Because <laughs> that's apparently a thing for yeah. family. That's one of those weird things that every family has that when you grow up, you always think it's normal until that like one time in your life where someone says something to you about it and they're like, Bro, no one does that. And you're like, are you serious? It's not normal. However, it is now normal for me, so. My entire upbringing, we had tacos and mac and cheese. My grandparents did it. My aunt and uncle did it. My parents did it. We just always had mac and cheese and tacos. Anytime it was tacos, it was mac and cheese. So then when I went to college and we were going to have like friend taco night at our apartment, everyone was like, I'll bring the meat. I'll bring the shells. And I was like, I'll bring the mac and cheese. And someone was like, why? And I was like, because it's tacos. And they were like, yeah. And I was like, and? Apparently not everybody does that. Not everybody has tacos and mac and cheese. Try it, I think you'll like it. You don't put it on the taco. No, 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 it's on the side. You like eat your taco and then you eat your mac and cheese mm -hmm. and it kind of all goes together. Although shells and cheese in the taco could be. I think it would be better if you just put the meat in. Like meat and shells and cheese? Yeah, that would be better. Maybe that's worth trying. Just saying. What better time to celebrate than Cinco de Mayo Taco Tuesday? Ay, ay, ay! Now, if that's not the most Americanized version of Cinco de Mayo, I don't know what it is. But it looks delicious. Babies. Bears beat Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> that was a good cold open. Oh my gosh. So, I don't know if I mentioned it all earlier today, but uh, Ricky's tail has been super limp today and on Monday. You have a little broken tail. And I noticed it right away on Monday, and I was like, that's weird. I don't know why he's not, like, using his tail correctly. Um, 
So I like it didn't feel weird or anything and I touched it and he was fine with it. He just wasn't using it at all and he is a dog that always wags his tail and uh, always has it up and fluffing around so I was like that's really weird. Yeah instead of wagging his tail like this <laughs> he was wagging his tail like this. It was like hanging almost between his legs <laughs> so I was like okay weird. So I was like whatever and then today I told Matt about it again. He was like, oh yeah, it is kind of broken looking. Not literally broken, but it just wasn't working. It was just very straight down and limp. It didn't and, seem to be um, bothering him though. No, it wasn't bothering him. He, he was still chilling. Yeah, like, not to be gross, but like when he uses the number two restroom here, you know, he like puts his tail up a little bit. So he was still doing that. Uh, he wasn't sitting with it straight out though, I noticed today. It was kind of to the side, but he was wagging his tail today. It was just down below. So Matt looked it up. We WebMD'd our doggy. <laughs> what did Wikipedia or WebMD tell you? Uh, so it was a website that was about dogs, like specifically catered to dogs and, you know, ailments and things. And I think I deduced that he has swimmer's tail. Swimmer's tail. That's the thing. It was it was all the symptoms and all the scenarios. So he was swimming a lot. Uh, he was wagging his tail all weekend, but particularly like he was swimming, going into deep areas, and he was having a good time. And he was shaking a bunch every time he went in the, out of the water. Yeah, he shook. True. So he shook like thirty times. That is true. So it's a common thing. Dogs get swimmer's tail, and he just had a little mild case, and I think it's like throughout the day it's been getting a little better, so I think tomorrow's going to be pretty good too. Yeah, he spent a lot of time, <laughs> he's taking up your space, <laughs> um, he spent a lot of time sleeping today, so he, uh, you know, I think we'll be <laughs> well rested. <laughs> yeah, we'll give um, it the night, we'll let him chill a little bit, he, it, like I said, it doesn't seem to be bothering him. Uh, he's still a happy pup. He just doesn't want to use his tail. And they said that, you know, it could last up to a week and that's normal. So we'll just keep an eye on it, see if it starts getting better, see how a good sleep does him where he's not moving around and letting <laughs> it rest. And we'll monitor and check it out again tomorrow. Yeah, he should be fine. Like I said, from uh, yesterday to today, there was a slight improvement that I noticed. So we'll see what tomorrow holds, but he'll be okay. Yep. But uh, that's it for us tonight. So end of Tuesday, mm -hmm. we, uh, I don't know, Small we'll get that tree bit. down in 2020, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. yeah. I'll worry about it later. Yep, I'm going to bed. Deal. All right, good night. Night, everybody. Good night.